the chisel marks so it is a man-made excavation and you can see the solid rock that is round there that is Mount Moriah rock good solid stuff the limestone rock that goes from the highest point here in the old city down through the old city under the temple Mount Plaza right the way down to the city of David in the south so this is all the limestone rock that it is cut out of one lump of rock and you'll see in front of the tomb where the people are coming out now oh, bless you. there is a channel cut out of the same solid rock that channel of course is for the rolling stone not the pop group but a big rolling stone <laughs> that was put in front of the tomb remember read the story carefully mm -hmm. in the gospels the romans rolled a big stone and the various gospels say it was exceedingly large we never found the original stone we think it was probably about two meters seven or eight feet high in which case it would have weighed five or six tons because the women said who will roll for us the stone away from the door clearly they were not able to and clearly they hadn't thought the job through a bit like getting to the airport without your passport they hadn't <laughs> planned on this one so when they came on that first easter sunday morning they were in for a bit of a shock weren't they not only was the stone rolled away but hallelujah the body of god well, we know the story. God sent an angel. In Matthew's Gospel, it says the angel sat upon it and rolled it away, just out of contempt for the Jewish authorities. So he rolled the stone away, not to let Jesus out, but to let the women folk and the apostles go in. Jesus could have walked through the doors, which we read later on, so he didn't need the stone to remove and to let him out. But the stone was rolled away, and I can tell you those women folk were dead scared. You read in Matthew's and Mark's account, they feared exceedingly. They were sore afraid, whatever translation you read. And that comes out very clearly. Wouldn't you be dead scared if you'd seen Jesus crucified three days earlier, put in the tomb, silver the stone, and come back, the stone rolled away, and the body gone? Well, we know the story. Now, I have a plan here, a picture of the tomb. You're looking at the entrance where my finger is. So that is where you go in, and then you enter into what is called the weeping chamber which is a fairly modest area which will hold six or eight people and of course if you were a wealthy man and remember Joseph of Arimathea was a wealthy person you would hire professional mourners to weep over your body you'd hire them before you died not after you died have them on standby sort of thing so the <laughs> professional mourners would weep in this area here and we read many times in the Gospels that Jesus had to put out those that created a tumult to put the professional women and the mourners outside. So that was the Jewish scene. Now when you look on the right, there are two loculi where my fingers are. The one furthest from you on the right where my finger is now has been used. The one nearest to you on the right has not been used. How do we know? Let the lady through please. How do we know? Because the one furthest from you on the right remember the Jews would finish leave the loculi unfinished until they knew the size of the body and then when they knew the size of the body they would cut out a small area where my finger is out of the rock so you'll see the one furthest from you where my finger is now has a area cut out for the feet the one nearest on the right does not have an area cut out for the feet and a stone pillow for the head so if this was the tomb that Jesus was laid in to prove that it was but if it was then he would have been laid in the locker light where my finger is and this is in keeping with what the bible says because it, it says that looking in where my finger is at the entrance they could see they could see across by looking in without going in they could see the place they saw the didn't see the body hallelujah because he arose but they saw the grave clothes and this is in line with what the bible tells us and then if you read mark's gospel very carefully it says entering in they saw on the right specifically mentioned on the right and it's significant that on the right they saw a young man meaning an angel sitting at the place where jesus had lain so this doesn't prove this is the tomb of jesus all it is is in line with what the bible tells us and then when you go in you'll see on the right on the wall there is a byzantine or anchorite cross with the letters Alpha and Omega. And you good Bible scholars from America will know Alpha and Omega, the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet, the A and the O. Revelation 1, Jesus says, I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Everything summed up from God's perspective in our Lord Jesus Christ. He's got nothing else to say to us. This is my <laughs> beloved son, listen to him. So God's message to you is not a place, it's a person. So we know this site therefore was used in a 
third and fourth and fifth century by Jewish Christians as a place of worship. And there's other evidence of perhaps some construction over the site for some building. There's other evidence of a channel cut in the ground, for perhaps a mikvah or a Jewish baptistry. And there's other evidence that this site was a Byzantine cross carved on the wall. If you look carefully, I'll show it to you later on. So this site was used for Christians in post-Christian, post-Constantine AD 325. Why? Because it was a site of special importance. Now you've seen hundreds of tombs and graves in your country, and under every one of those tombstones there's a dead man's bones. But this one's different. Why? Because when you go in, it's empty. Why? Because he's in heaven. And those who love him and know him as their Lord and Saviour, you're going to be there with him. If you trust him as your Saviour. And if you get there before I do. Look out for me, for I am coming to you. God bless you, cause his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you, and give you his peace. And when you go in, be careful the ground is uneven, enjoy your visit, and then make your way back to your fellowship area where we were just sitting there. And there's a bowl there, an offering if you'd like to take a collection for the work of the ministry here. Thank you very much for listening. Enjoy your visit. You. Mm -hmm. 